everybody. Welcome to The Bottom Line. I'm Susan and this is Jim. And on The Bottom Line, what we do is we talk about what does the Bible say about your current pressure problem situation that you might be facing. We always go back and we say that that is the bottom line. It is the bottom line. That is where your answer is. It's right there in the Word of God. Most powerful book on the planet. No you know, there's... Uh, of course, this is the written Word of God, and as you read it and deposit it into your heart, it becomes alive. It does become alive. You know, it's, I got born again when I was 12 years old. You did? 12 years old, the summer of 1958, and I knew that I was born again. I knew I was going to heaven, mm -hmm. no doubt in my mind. But from, for the next 10 years, all I knew was I was going to heaven. Yeah. And I wasn't exactly walking with the Lord. But when I, when, when I was about 22, you and I uh, uh, got filled with the Holy Ghost. Yep. Carol that, Lewis laid hands on us and we right. got filled with the Holy Ghost. And uh, what, what happened then was we, had a, we, we developed an appetite for the Word of God that we had never had We had before. never had that before. Never had it before. And I remember... Uh, and I've told this story a lot of times on our program, but I just I just like to go back and, and rehearse it. Yeah, you do. One night we went to a meeting, and there was a man named Jay Blevins, and he was teaching. Mm -hmm. And he began to talk about things that God had done for you, got things that God wanted to do for you. Yeah. And I, I remember thinking, sitting there thinking, this, absolute, this can't be true. I have never heard this in my life. That, that God really, see, I thought that you just did the best you could. Yeah. You, know, you just tried not to sin. Yeah, you and you go to church on Sunday. Yeah, but you, yeah. you know, and I remember we had uh, two small children, and mm -hmm. so we went home that night, and uh, you went to bed, but we put the children to bed, and you went to bed, and I told you, I said, well, Susan, I wrote down all the scriptures that this man talked about. I said, I just don't think this is in the Bible. I don't think it's really true. And so I said, but I'm, on, I'm going to go in here and I'm going to re read all these scriptures. And I remember I went in and I read them and I thought, well, that's what it says. And I read them again. And I remember I went in there and I woke you up. And I said, Susan, it's true. everything this man says is in the Bible. Yeah. Everything. He did not say one thing that there's not a scripture for. Mm -hmm. And I said, that tells me this. This is the way you and I are going to have to live from now on. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was such an awakening in our lives. You he know, and, and like Jim said, he was born again. He was a believer. Was. I was a believer. And, you know, had been, I was probably about the same age you were when I actually went forward in church. I think, though, it seemed like I had already had Jesus in my heart. You know, I already knew, you know. But nevertheless, you know, we just didn't know. That's right. We didn't know that you could actually walk with God day by day, hear His voice, and walk out the promises of God according to Scripture. We didn't know that. We did not know it. You know, it was just, just a, you know, live a good life. That's just right. do the best you can. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and, and when we started off, wow, we had a, we had, we had a lot of challenges. But we, we, we just didn't give up. Right. You know, there's times when you you do what you think the Bible is saying or you think you do what the Bible is saying and you kind of get knocked down. Mm -hmm. And so the, w one tendency is to say, well, I knew this wouldn't work. But mm -hmm. you and I never said that. Mm -hmm. we, would, we would just get up and do it again. Right, just continue. Just get up, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like didn't say Jesus to those Jews <laughs> which believed on him if we you were continue. Those. In you in my word. Then are you my disciples and you should know the truth and the truth shall make you free. We just we just continued. Right. And and yeah. then as as we continued, then th things just kind of began to, to to I hate to use the word work, but that's exactly that's yeah. essentially what it was. You know, it it, it would the, the result would be exactly what the Bible said the result would be. Mm -hmm. And so we just we just kept on keeping on. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And so, Pope, we, we began last week talking about 
returning to the basics, returning to the fundamentals, mm -hmm. which, which is what you, you, it, to, to excel in anything, you always have to return to the fundamentals, uh, to the basics, and, and continually go over them. Isn't that yeah, true? You, have to, you have to master those things. You have to master have to, the fundamentals. Has to and happen. so last week we talked about uh, uh, faith. And Hebrews 11, 6 says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And when it says without faith, it doesn't mean that you don't have it. It means that you don't use it. Because if you are born again, you have it. If you were born again, the Bible declares in Romans chapter 12 that God has dealt to every man being born again the measure or a measure of faith. faith. So you, you have the faith lives on the inside of you, but it must be developed. That's like your muscles. Mm -hmm. You know, if you never use your muscles, they will never grow. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you use right. the muscles and, and whatever, then they will grow. Well, it, it's the same way with faith. Faith needs to grow in your life. Bible, in fact, the Bible tells us, and I believe it's Peter, it says grow in faith. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, we have a friend, Rick Renner, and he taught, used to, he used to come to our church quite a bit. Of course, now he's in Russia, so he's not here much. But he talked about faith in such a simple way as it's standing by a word from God. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do. And you know, that's, that's really what faith is. It's when you take what God has spoken to your heart and you you will not let that go. That's right. You know, one time years ago, we had this dog. Her name was Hannah. She was a Rottweiler. And so she was a beautiful dog, and we loved her a lot. But she had this little, she had this thing about her. Anything that had a handle, she thought it was hers. Right. It didn't matter who had it. You could be sweeping. You could be raking. But if it had a handle and she was anywhere around, she was going to have it. Yes, it was yes. going to be hers. And so she, she, I don't guess she would have ever gotten really vicious and bit me about it, but I, always, <laughs> I got to where I'll just give it to her because I didn't want to wrestle with her about it because when she would clamp down on it, you could not get it back. Right. I mean, absolutely not physically strong enough to pull it out of her mouth. I just, just couldn't do it. So I would just, well, okay, I'll sweep later. <laughs> when you're in the backyard, I'll come back and finish. But anyway, that's how we need to be in our everyday Christian life about the things of God. Those things that He has spoken to our heart, those things which we know are a dream that He's put on the inside of us, we need to have the same, same possessiveness about that as my dog had that's about right. my... That's right my things I wanted to clean up with. You know, just it's mine and I'm not willing not to have it. I'm going to continue on this path. I'm going to have it. That's right. You know, that's, that's how you have to be like that because it's not, a, it's not a Doris Day world in Christianity. No, it's not case or ass or all, whatever will be, will be. And if you take that attitude, you're not going to have that aggressiveness that you that is required to possess the promise of God. And, you know, you could think about different Bible heroes that, you know, went through a lot of things. Like you think about Caleb and, you know, he's described along with Joshua. These were two really mighty warriors mm -hmm. of faith. And remember when he was like 80, here's how aggressive he was. He says, look, he says, I'm as strong now as I was when I was 40. Mm -hmm. Give me this mountain. You know, and what he, he didn't mean that, oh, I'm just going to walk up and unlock it and it's going to be mine. He knew he was going to have to go and possess it, but he said, I can do that. He said, I'm just strong now as I was then. That's how we must be. We must be those people who, when we see it, say, yes, I'm going to, that's mine. God has given that to me and I'm not letting that I go. I refuse to do without it. That's right. You got to be that way. You got to be that way. That's right. So, and then all right, we talked about faith, mm -hmm. and then we also talked about prayer, how important prayer is. You need, yep. to, you need as believers, we need to develop a really good prayer life. Mm -hmm. And a prayer life is not necessarily just asking God for things. Right. You know, mm -hmm. It's okay to ask God for things. He, in fact, he told us to. Yeah. He said, ask and you will receive. Mm -hmm. But it's, it, it's also just fellowshipping with God, just mm -hmm. just taking time to be with Him. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. And just that is, and, and worshiping God yeah. and, and, and whatever. So. And just recounting all the things he's done in yeah. your life. And then even you can even go back into scriptures and, and just rehearse the things that you've seen written down that God has done. You know, and as you do that, it's like, it's like your, your um, bond, your connection with the Heavenly Father just grows deeper and deeper and deeper because you you become so personal with him that's right that's and then right. he becomes so personal that's with right. you. okay so we talked about faith and we talked about prayer, prayer. okay now let's talk about being thankful let's i think do. i think that is an absolute fundamental mm -hmm. in the christian life okay being thankful okay i have some good scriptures okay, here let's hear it okay this is uh from the book of colossians okay. and i'm gonna this is chapter three and i'm gonna this is the new living translation and I'm going to start with verse 12, and, and I'm going to read it. It looks like a paragraph, but it goes all the way down to verse 16. Okay. Since God chose you to be the holy people He loves. Okay, now just think about that. He chose you to be His holy person that He loves. He chose you. Mm -hmm. You must clothe yourselves with tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, which all of these are are described in Galatians as fruit of the Spirit. And he says you must clothe yourself with these things. In other words, these are things in your life that are not just natural to you. So you must make some effort to see that they are in your life, right? Okay, then verse 13. Make allowance for each other's faults. And boy, do we have to do that. Oh, yes. And forgive anyone who offends you. Do we have to do that? Yes. yes. Is it easy? No. Is it possible? Yes. Okay, and then he says, Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. In verse 14, Above all, clothe yourselves with love which binds us all together in perfect harmony. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your heart. For as members of one body, you are called to live in peace. And then he says, This is so profound, And always be thankful. Always. always be thankful. No matter what what always be thankful always find something to be thankful about That's always right. you know you can look back over your life and there's just things that you could be thankful mm -hmm. about. isn't that true that's right uh, I, i'm just, i'm thankful that my mama saw to it that i got born again i know i am so thankful she did yeah here's another scripture in the book of romans chapter one okay and i'm going to start with verse number 20. It says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because although they knew God, they did what? Knew. They, knew God, they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. But it says right here, they were not thankful. Yeah, you know, Jim, you know, we, and we can tell some several accounts in the Bible where you see examples of people that were thankful. But just personally, on your, in your everyday life, you know, when, when you experience someone showing thankfulness to you for something you've mm -hmm. done, how does that make you feel? It makes you feel good. It's, it's like, well, wow, you know, you didn't expect that. Yeah. And so, you know, but it needs to be a lifestyle with us as believers that we're continually so thankful, you know, that we don't take lightly, you know, the things of God or, or the friendships that we have that we cherish and that we, you know, ascribe thankfulness in every part of our lives. That's right. You know, I, you know, you, 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 I mean, all of us can go back and we can look at things that, that we know that God did for us. Yeah. Just thank Him. Lord, I just want, I, I back in, you know, the summer of whatever, mm -hmm. this this happened, and I know, sir, that it was you, and I just want to, I want to take oh, a minute I'm here just so to thankful. stop and thank you. Yeah. Lord. Just thank you mm -hmm. for it, Lord. And I'm, I just want you to know, Lord, that I'm thankful for everything that you've done for me for the past 73 years. But I think but He I'm really likes it when we get very specific and we remember a certain incident and we even yeah. rehearse that incident, and then we 
thank you, God. You were you were right there with me. You yeah. saw me through that. Thank you. There's a scripture in Philippians that says, Let your request be made known unto God with thanksgiving. thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. And then in the Old Testament it says, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving in my heart. Yeah. You know, I know one time I did a Bible study and one, that was one of the things we talked about was we were talking about attire. We were talking about fashion first for ladies. And mm -hmm. so one of the things was this thankfulness, this garment that you wear. You know, that's just who we are as Christians, as believers. You know, we should be those people that are quick to say thank you. That's right. You know, and the thing is, being thankful doesn't cost you anything. No. You know, Nothing. I know. I know. Like for instance, I always try to. Whenever you cook, I always, you always thank I always, me, even if it's not good. I always try to thank you for for the meal that you cooked. You know, and and, and we should we should teach our children and our grandchildren to be thankful, mm -hmm. to express thanks for things that people would do to them. That's right. Before them, I mean. That's right. Uh, and it's just we we just need to live a life of. Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and it, it's it's throughout the Bible about being thankful for you know for for what you have, mm -hmm. being thankful for what God has done for you. Mm -hmm. you know, Let me read you one more scripture. Okay, okay? this okay, is good. Colossians, and it's still Colossians. It's chapter three, but I'm just going to continue with what I was reading. Okay. This this time I'm in verse sixteen, okay. and he says, "Let the message about Christ in all its richness." Fill your lives, teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do or say, whatever you do or say, as a representative of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through him to God the Father. So, A lifestyle of thankfulness is necessary. It's necessary. It is necessary. That's, that mm -hmm. goes back to... To, I, I just believe that being thankful for what God has done for you, I just believe that's part of the basics. Mm -hmm. And you know, we always tell the story about the the uh, the lepers. There were ten of them right. that came to Jesus <clears throat> for healing. And so, anyway, as they they all you know left Jesus' presence, and then one of them came back. And so, was it ten? ten. And so anyway, the one that came back lay prostrate at Jesus' feet. He said, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, thank you for healing me. And then the Bible says that this man was made whole. Yeah. Of course, you can read some things into that because we understand that leprosy was so debilitating. It, like your ear would be, your lobe of your ear might have just rotted off or maybe even your... No. nostrils were just gone or you know parts of your body were just m vacant or missing and this man comes back and he's thank you God for heal thank you Jesus for healing me and Jesus said what did he say to him he said your faith has made you whole you, yeah wholeness and so because he was whole then you have to think well his ear came back. That's right. His nose came back. You know, his fingers that had rotted off returned. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... And that was part of being thankful. It was because he was thankful. But now see, he didn't come back because of, you know, he was looking for that to happen. That's no, not, no. not what motivated because, him. He came back because he was thankful. He came back because he was thankful. Yes. He was so He just thankful. wanted to come and thank the Yeah. Lord. Yeah, and so, you know, there's benefits to being thankful. That's right. You know, but... That's right. Okay. But the benefits shouldn't be your motivation. That's right. You just should have a thankful heart. Just be heart. thankful. That's, right. That's what he said here. Just have a thankful heart. Always be Always. thankful. Right. Always be thankful. Okay. All right, another part of the basics, I believe, is hope. Hope. Yeah, absolutely. Hope, hope. is so powerful. You know, the Bible says... It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped, hoped for, for, the evidence of things not seen. Okay. Hope. Now this is W. E. Vine says this. It says, hope is the happy anticipation of good. It is not wishful thinking 
or an insincere, I hope so, or an insecure, I hope so. But it is a confident expectation. Common definition of hope is desire plus expectation. Yeah. And so hope, you can't see. It's, it's so close to being faith. Yes. Because something you hope for is something that's out there. Right. And so well, how, how did that verse go that involves faith and it, hope? It says, in Hebrews, it says, now, uh, uh, it says, faith, faith is the substance of, of things, things hoped for. for. In other words, if you have no hope, then you have nothing for your faith to work with. Right. So it requires hope. Mm -hmm. I mean, have you ever looked at people, looked into their face, looked into their eyes, and you knew that you were looking at hopelessness? Yep. I have seen that. I mean, I think, I think we all have. It's, it's just there's mm -hmm. no hope. Yeah. And so how does that happen? Well, it happens because, you know, the storms of life are like the waves that buffet mm -hmm. against a ship that's, you know, like in port. And they just come and they come. And a lot of times people experience things over and over and over until it just wears them down. That's right. And so they can lose their hope. Now, what, what could they do? Well, they could, if they could just for a moment look away from that, they could regain their ground. But, you know, it, it would take, you know, looking out away from that and putting your eyes back on God, back on His Word, worshiping him that's the only way you could ever get back and I, and I tell you what I, I really believe this I do believe that this is where friends come in yeah friends are so important you know the thing yeah. is because friends can encourage you mm -hmm. and encouragement produces hope yes it does encouragement produces hope you know and and, and we, we all get to the place where you know like you said you know you've just been buffeted and buffeted and buffeted and buffeted and, and you don't see anything happening, don't see anything happening, don't see anything happening, and you begin to wear down. Mm -hmm. But that's where that friend comes in and he encourages you or he or she encourages you. Mm -hmm. And when that does, hope rises again. That's right. You can be that person that has the lifeline for someone else. You can you can look at people and you can know when they, they have reached that point of desperation where they're just going to throw in the towel and just give it up. Mm -hmm. You can be that one that holds out the truth to them. Say, you know, there's, there's just one saying. This is a worldly saying where there's life, there's hope. Yeah. And you know what, though? That's, that's truth. That is true. Yeah. If you can muster that up, you can regain but, you know, it's going to require looking away, looking away. You can't, as long as you're, as you're being tested and tried and the circumstances are so bad, as long as you're concentrating on them, the hope is not going to return. No, no, you have to right. look away from it. That's right. Yeah, you have to get a new focus. So you have, you focus. have, to have hope. Hebrews yeah. 10, 23 says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Mm -hmm. Let's hold fast to it, our confession of hope. In other words, we're not going to change. Yeah, that's, that's really good, holding fast. Hold fast to it. Hold you know, fast. see, that's real similar to what I was talking about earlier. <laughs> I was talking about our dog. Yes. The dog was holding fast. You know, that's what you've got to do, you yeah. know. Uh, you know, I remember speaking <laughs> about Hannah, the dog. I remember one time we took her to the vet, uh -huh. and uh, she had to stay uh, overnight. Oh, or yeah. Something. <laughs> and so the next yeah. day we went in, and he said, okay, here's your bill. He said, now, I'm not, I'm not going to charge you for all the brooms she tore up. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> because every yeah. time they went out there with the broom, you remember, like you said, she yeah. thought it was hers. Do you think that maybe the where she came from, maybe somebody beat her with a broom I don't know. or something? I don't know. I don't okay. know. Well, so anyway, yeah, you gotta you gotta hold fast that confession right. of hope. hope. All right. So, yeah. All right. Let's talk about something else. We have just a couple of minutes left here. We'll okay. get started on this. And let's talk about faithfulness. Faithfulness. That, I I believe that that is some of the some of the uh, 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 fundamentals. 
yeah. is being faithful. Mm -hmm. God expects you and I to be faithful. He mm -hmm. said, if you're not faithful in the little things, how can you be faithful in oh, the big much. things? Yeah. So you be faithful in the little things where you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, see, the problem is little things. We don't think they're important. We don't think little things are important. And so we, we sometimes get like the, the um, there were three people in, that Jesus worked with. He told a story about them and they were, he gave them all these talents. Right. And so anyway, there was one with a talent and he had two and then one had five. And one anyway, had one. one had one. And so, you know, the one with five, me and, yeah, I'm on top of the world. I'm important. And so it was easy or it may seem as if it would be easier to be faithful over that. But the guy with just the one, he felt like, well, this is so insignificant. Yeah. I'll, just, I'll just go hide this. I'll just bury it. You know, I'll just be sure I keep it safe. You know, I'm not going to really do anything with it. I'm not going to really be faithful to see what it could do. I'm just going to... And see, that we have that mentality a lot. That, yes, we do. That we don't want to, you know, and it's so yeah. important to be faithful. God's looking for faithful people. God is looking for faithful people. And I believe faithfulness breeds promotion. Mm -hmm. What do you think? I believe you're right. Faithfulness breeds promotion. promotion. And we would all like to be promoted. Yeah. But So just, here's the thing about it. Just be faithful where you are. Yeah, whatever be that is where you are. So, mm -hmm. talking about today, we've been talking about today about returning to the fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And we believe that, you know, that, that that's exactly what you, in this, in this walk with God, we have to go, always go back to the fundamentals. Yeah, yep, that's right. Well, Susan, I want to thank you for allowing us to be a part of your week. If you have prayer requests, we would urge you to contact us. We would love to pray the prayer of faith with you to see God change your circumstances. Mm -hmm. Remember this, Jesus said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples, disciples indeed, indeed, and you should know, know the truth, truth, and the truth, truth will set, set you free. free.